Lanahan. Uh, congratulations on not killing any of us making pies tonight. Um, how did you find the whole cookathon against your, your colleagues? Got a bit competitive? It got very competitive. I was quite happy I was uh, on this station here in the middle of the, the food fight. Uh, which just flew past. That was by, utterly by, predictable, the food fight. By the people who started it, yeah, by Ashton, Haskell, Bowden, definitely was predictable, but uh, there was some, it was a bit dodgy at the start with all the pies, but I think everybody uh, sort of produced some really nice tasting pies, which is uh, actually quite astonishing in itself. Well, I, I wouldn't go as far as say that, Matt, but um, having consumed some of it, Chris Ashton was last seen running off with a chef's hat on his head and one of those muffler sound recorders things as well. So he's like a toddler with, with a, you know, like a bag to rip up. Yeah, you, you, you give him anything and he's just going to find something funny to do with or he just, you, he, couldn't live, he couldn't live with nothing around him. You could give him a blank piece of paper with nothing else and he'd find something fun to do with it. Um, but he, he's, he's an interesting character, but he's a, a fantastic rugby player, that's what we want. He's not too bad, is he? Now, it's been intense, it's been full on, it's been physical, as you'd expect it to be over the last few weeks. I guess something like tonight is just a nice, fun distraction. Yeah, it's brilliant. It, it obviously brings the, the squad together, because it's actually quite a, a team, team thing apart from away from rugby, and it's, it's fantastic to have something like this away from the team room, the team games, the training, and the... Uh, it's a long days we have anyway, but this is a nice change up and it's a bit of fun. Uh, I was in the company of Mr. Manu Tuilangi the other day, and he, he's taking you on on the, on the tattoo front. He's got a few as well, probably not as many as you. But no, he's Manu's got his, uh, his three quarter sleeve on his arm, but it's, it's brilliant. I've, I've seen it and uh, studied it, and it's uh, fantastic to look at those tribal ones. Um, look what they've done so, so acutely with the, with the utensils that they use, because they don't use the gun that the, the more. 21st century tattoo issues, um, but he's got a bit, a bit to go. Uh, I've got a lot more colour than him, but I think that that's what tattoos are. They're individual things that everybody chooses uh, to have their own, and it's not a competition in tattoos. Yeah, I know, no, absolutely. And Courtney's got a lot as well. Has he? Yeah, Courtney's two, got two arms. Is that right? You've got the most at the moment. I think so, because I've started doing my neck, my legs, and my stomach and ribs. Right, okay. But I mean, we've talked about this before, Banners. I mean, it's, it really is, you see, as, as, as the same as sort of uh, artistic graffiti, or you, you, you know, these are tattoos, and you're not a big lump we should avoid in a dark corridor. For you, this is art, isn't it? Yeah, it's art. I just I like, I like what I see, and sometimes I try and get thought processes behind them, like good and evil, my family, uh, like where I'm coming from, and it, it's sometimes a story of your life which you put on your body, and I think that's what a lot of people do, and it's uh, as well as artwork. And at the end of the day, some people smoke, that damages their lungs, some people drink, that damages their liver. I get tattoos, it doesn't damage me, it just hurts for 10 minutes afterwards, but that's my choice. But you must be excited to think that you're so close to what be your first World Cup? It's, it's exciting to be involved in, in the build-up to the World Cup. Uh, it's been a lot of seven weeks that, I, that everybody's run their socks off and it's really exciting to be involved in that. Well, look at it. Mike Tyndall, uh, assuming he recovers from the weekend. Yeah. Yourself, Manu, I mean, uh, Shantin as well. You're, you're, not, you're not small guys and I guess this is the modern midfielder now because you'll be up against and then the Mark Nonus, the, the uh, Sonny Bill Williamses of the world as well. Yeah, it's, it's the way the game's evolving for the past uh, past couple of years, and it's the way that the game's evolved. I come on, came on the scene and people thought that somebody my size shouldn't be playing in the backs, but like you named a few of those people that uh, the Kiwis have had big players, uh, Jean de Villiers from uh, South Africa, Jacques Marie as well, big guys that play in the backs, and it, it's not a. Not a difference. It's not you don't get sterilised by your shape or your size anymore. It's what your skill and ability is. Now you're from Jersey. How many Channel Islands have played rugby for England before? Uh, I bet you know the answer to this. There's none, none for in the male game. I remember is that right? saying in the female game, but I don't know. I haven't had that definite. Uh, definite Somebody said to me that's definitely, but it's, there's no males that have ever played in. So England. you're the first ever Channel Island, not just a Jersey island. Yeah. To play for England. Well, born and bred, yeah. Does that mean something to you? Yeah, massive. It's, it's an opportunity that I can, that I can sort of give people a sort of inspiration back home to, to do what they want. But I've still got to get selected and still got to, to go there and get on that plane. So it's a, a long three weeks ahead of me, but I'm going to give it my best shot to be that, that first person. Just hopefully well, people don't forget me. The very, very best of luck to you. And uh, just keep ahead of Courtney and Manu with the, with the old tats, eh? Yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep the brotherhood going.